So good morning, everyone. And thank you very much, Dassault, for inviting us. It's a great pleasure to be here. It's a great you know, industrial event. And of course, we're, we're privileged to be part of this uh, community. So thank you. So today, you know, my name is Mike Larson, by the way, and I run robot systems for ABB. And today, I thought I'd talk a little about the sustainable factor of the future. So the manufacturing industry is changing based on robots, automation, and digitalization. And we need to take a responsible approach to this, right? At ABB, we think sustainability is about balancing economic progress, environmental stewardship, and social progress for all our stakeholders. And the key is really to leave the planet in a better place than we found it, right? That must be the guiding principle. So I wanted to start with a little video. It's very precise, of course, because it's a robot. And, uh, and that's like the perfect partner because it always does the same. It, uh, it always has perfect timing. We are, as of now, very much stepping into a future where robots and artificial intelligence will be a part of our life. And I think it's interesting to, to see how we will deal with that. How, how are we going to live our lives with, ro with robots in the future? So, why am I showing this video? So it's a little bit off the topic maybe, but what is our role when we develop technology? We need to develop technology that enhances our collaboration with the human in the industry, right? We want to make sure that the technology is safe. We want to make sure that you know, people and humans can share the workspace and of course also increase the quality of work. That is our responsibility. So that's also part of our sustainability uh, efforts, right? So. Today, as I said, I want to talk about the sustainable factor of the future, but before we jump into the how and the, the what, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the why. Why do we need a factor of the future? What is wrong with the one we already have? So I will take an example from the automotive industry, and uh, I put the big picture up on the screen. Um, why, what is driving the need for the factor of the future? So for us, we look at changing consumer demands, right? If you look at the slide, by 2030, 50% of cars that will be sold will be sold in Asia. And that, of course, changes the demand from the traditional uh, customer. So, for example, the Asian, Asian customers might look differently at car usage. They might be looking differently at car sharing. They might be different, look at different at car ownership. So these are changing. We're also looking at of course, eventually the autom autonomous car will be on the road in the next five to 10 years. Most of the safety aspects will be worked out. So we'll see, of course, a change in, in cars and what they actually represent. And also, governmental uh, requirements in terms of uh, sustainability, making sure you have sustainable processes in your manufacturing will also drive the change. So there's really three pieces. One is the the demands, the second one is really the competition. If you look at traditional car manufacturing, you have had OEMs competing with each other and tier ones competing for, for the supply chain. If you go forward and you look at a, a more complex uh, supply uh, and competitive landscape, you have the traditional players, but now then software is becoming much more prevalent and much more important in the manufacturing. Companies like Google and Apple is entering the field. We go into more electrical vehicles, so companies with electrification and battery know-how is entering the field, which have a Dyson. We're talking about companies who specialize it's only in autonomous car technology, Tesla. We take non-traditional industry manufact car manufacturers like Neo, Evergrande, and so on. And of course, we also have ride-sharing services, Uber, DD, and they might have a different uh, need for cars that will run you know, longer times and so on and so forth. They might be interested in adding their own technology to the fleet. The third piece is really the product. So I talked about the customer needs. I talked about the competitive landscape. I also want to talk about the product. The product is changing. You know, in a few years, we will see a lot less you know, uh, car 
cars with the internal combustion engine and made out of steel. In the future, we'll look at a car that is made out of predominantly carbon fiber, glass, and aluminum. And they will have a battery and four electrical motors. And the manufacturing processes to, co to produce a car like this is vastly different from tra uh, traditional spot and arc welding methods. So if you look at it in summary, the real needs are customer demands are changing, the competitive landscape is changing, and the product is changing. And we think that the, the four most important trends in this going forward would be you know, collaboration, digitalization, simplification, and flexibility. And that is really the trend that's going to drive us towards the factory of the future. If you look at the overall manufacturing processes of the past, they have been very much separated. So you have looked at the machine level, the robot, separately. You have looked at the line level separately. You have looked at maybe an MES system. But all of them have really worked in optimizing each piece by itself. Going forward, of course, we want to see this in harmony. And imagine if you could now take the manufacturing system and create a dynamic real-time model where real-time data from every part of the plant can suddenly be driving the, the manufacturing process. Imagine that you could have collaborative robot working next to humans in every part of the plant. Imagine that you know, changes to demand will dynamically change the manufacturing process and introduce new, new, new products. And of course, in addition to that, to imagine now that you can incorporate sustainable processes in every part of the manufacturing. This is truly the manufacturing of the future. This is the, there we go. So this was a slide I wanted to show. So at AVB, we just uh, took the first uh, shovels and, and dug a hole in the ground here in Shanghai for the new factory for producing AVB robots. And what we have done, we have tried to collect all the different technology pieces and put them in one place to create really what we think is going to be the factory of the future. And if you take a look at how this would actually look like in a little rendering, we can go through and take a little bit of a first view. So what we want to do is, of course, to incorporate the trends that I just talked about, the collaboration, the simplification, the digitalization, and, and the flexibility. And if you look at this, you can see that a lot of new technology has already been incorporated. So take a look at collaboration, for example. This is a line where we try to make the best out of what needs to be done by humans and what to make the best out by robots. You know, autonom an autonomous task, uh, monotone task maybe be better done by robots and more precise work might be done with, with, uh, with human help. And to put them side by side, of course, is an opportunity for us to, to develop technology that is, that is friendly to, to efficiency but also working together. If you also look at flexibility, The traditional manufacturing concepts with conveyors and fixed conveyance is gone. We have now taken the AGVs and moving robots to produce uh, robots in a more flexible landscape. This helps us, of course, to design a smaller footprint. It helps us be more flexible in terms of demand for what comes on the line in batch of one. It also gives us an opportunity to scale so you can start small and you can increase as you go because the cells that are producing the robots are standardized cells and all you need to do is to add more cells and expand the footprint as you need. So you don't need to use more energy than you absolutely have to to start with and then you can expand as you go. Of course, we also integrate naturally quality and other processes in, in as we go. If you talk about simplification, hopefully, Robots, as, I, as you saw in the video, are today able to work with humans without having cages. You know, in the past, we had to have cages around them. Today, we can have them anywhere in the factory, and we can create a completely different flexible manufacturing platform where humans can exist and walk through the plant. And if they interact with technology somewhere or their safety issues, we will have a concept that automatically detects the motion 
make sure that there is a safety protocol in place and we don't need the fence anymore. This kind of software is of course also you know, a fantastic opportunity to also look at a more flexible production layout. And also I wanted to touch a little bit on digitalization. So with cloud-based uh, maintenance services, we can keep track of the health of every aspect of the plant, every, every piece of equipment, and we will know exactly how it feels. And if it have an issue, we can try to avoid having unsched unscheduled maintenance breakdowns and interrupt production, but rather leave you know, the changes to an, an updates and maintenance to scheduled maintenance breaks on weekends or nights. And this, of course, also helps with keeping the production flowing. Last but not least, uh, to put all this together, we, of course, want to look at the digital twin. And this is you know, part of the reason why we want to talk with you today. Now we have an opportunity to have dynamic information from all the different processes, making us, giving us the ability to make decisions in real time. What product to produce, how to produce it, what data do we have, what quality do we have, how do we trace quality back to the different manufacturing steps. And this is, of course, interesting to say we can push production, we can look at higher throughput, but more importantly, we can now also start looking at integrating sustainability uh, measurements in the process itself. How do we make sure that we reduce waste? If you see the, the flexibility piece with the AGVs, there are no racks standing by the line. All the material is gone and put in a kitting zone. We reduce the amount of material and stock. We can also look at, for example, energy consumption. Can we run manufacturing beyond off-peak time so that we reduce the strain on the grid? These are things that we can incorporate in the process and we can see and we can try to understand how can we be a more responsible supplier and a more responsible producer. Of course, we want to make sure that we you know, keep it simple for the, for the operators and that we have a good overview of what's going on. Now, that was a little bit of the plan that we have at ABB for making sure that A, we can create uh, a factory layout that is taking care of the future demands in terms of production, and also making sure that we have a sustainability as a you know, guiding principle for how we go forward in all the steps of what we do. So I'm going to back out. More importantly, if you now look at an industry and manufacturing company like ABB, obviously when we go into software and digital platforms, we would like to work in an ecosystem with partners that really can make a difference. And that's why we have chosen to work together with, with Dassault, because we believe that Dassault represents an industry leader in digitalization, digital twin simulation, with the Delmia platform, Aprecio, combining the expertise that ABB represents in manufacturing and bringing forward manufacturing processes with the strength of the immersive software that the, that the soul can, can give us, this is truly a game-changing concept. And I really do think that we have had quite a few interactions with many customers and it's really, really appealing to them to see this combination. And I think that this can be, you know, for the, for the future, this will be a very, very strong collaboration and the synergies are fantastic. So that's a little bit also why we wanted the opportunity to present here today because I think this is something that you, know, you should take home. This is a collaboration and an ecosystem approach that we you know, feel very strongly about. So all in all, I wanted just to have that little opportunity to talk about the fact of the future. If you are able to, you can see all of these different technologies live today. If you want to go to CIIF, you will also see some of the collaboration opportunities here with the robot and Dassault, uh, Dassault platform. So please take the opportunity these, all these technologies that I show today in the fact of the future are not things that we are concepting. There are things that we're already putting in place at customers. So all of these different concepts exist today. We're using them today, and that's something that we're very proud of. So with that, I'm going to say thank you for listening. I'm going to take some questions. If you have any, I'm happy to take a few questions uh, if you have any. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So j just, just before we have questions, I think uh, this was, again, uh, a, a, a very interesting perspective because 
uh, it seems that from the ABB standpoint, uh, you do share some of, uh, of, of, of the questions that we have. Yes. And disruption of the market, flexibility, simplicity, collaboration exactly. as being one of the uh, key answers. Yeah. And, and uh, obviously, when you see uh, your factory of the future, right, it, it does resemble uh, a lot of, of, of what uh, we think, and hence the collaboration is. Yeah, it's a very exciting time to be in manufacturing today because you know a lot of different things are changing because of the change in technology, because of the availability of digitalization, and because of you know that you know robots are changing as well. So we see you know these different drivers is going to change uh, manufacturing quite a bit going forward, and it's very exciting to be part of that. So is the movie we saw something cl uh, close to? I look at the question from the community. Close to the. Uh, the facility you're building outside uh, Shanghai? No, actually, this is uh, a show that calls Dances with Robots. It was uh, run in Sweden. The artist is a Swedish uh, person, Fredrik uh, Rydstrand. And he has done this, uh, he has run like uh, 10 different shows in different countries. He hasn't run any here. But the idea was for him, he was very keen on, 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 on introducing technology and combining it with art. And this is a very interesting concept, right? And, and we thought it was a, such a good idea to show how technology and humans can work together, you know, safely. And it's a different perspective on things. We come from the engineering side and want to see how we can make things. Frederick was coming from the artistic side and see how can we, how can we work together. And that was really, really uh, cool to see, I think. All right. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Um, and, uh, and obviously looking forward to the future work with ABB. Uh, through the collaboration that we have set up earlier this year.